In my last video on the Rubik's 4x4 and the Void Cube, I talked about parity, which is when you get impossible situations on a normal 3x3, but that can show up in other puzzles. So we use parity to refer to situations that are normally not solvable and you need to do something special. But what parity actually means is just odd or even. So what we usually mean is odd parity, we just don't say the odd part. But I'm going to explain what exactly is happening an odd number of times that causes these positions. To start off, we'll look at the easiest example, which is a 2x2. Two two. On a 2x2, two two, it's absolutely possible to just swap two pieces. And the thing is, it's also possible to swap two pieces on a 3x3. Three three. It's just that you can't do this by doing regular turns. The only way this is possible is by taking pieces out and rearranging them. When you can do that, the rules of the game are really different, but when you are only allowed to do outer turns, then you have to look at what exactly does an outer turn do, and why does that only allow for certain situations on different puzzles. So on 2x2, two two, if we look at what an outer turn does, then obviously it moves four pieces around, but let's think about that in terms of swapping pieces. So I know an algorithm that can swap these two, let's do that now, and now I can swap these two as well, and now I'll swap these two. And as you can see, it looks like I've just done one turn, but what I've actually done is three swaps of pieces. So on a two by two, one turn is really just doing three swaps really quickly. So if I can do three swaps, then I can do six swaps, and nine, and 12, and 15, and so on. Every position on a two by two is a multiple of three swaps. Now that might feel wrong to you because clearly I've shown you something that's one swap and one is not a multiple of three, but this is a multiple of three if you're clever. So to produce one swap, I'm just gonna do one swap right here, and then I'm going to do another swap here, and then I'm gonna do another one here again. So that's three total swaps and I've produced this case, which means this is a multiple of three. In fact, any odd number is going to be a multiple of three for our purposes. So the big takeaway here is that if you can do an odd number of swaps, that means you can do any number of swaps. But you can also imagine that if for some reason we can only do an even number of swaps, then we can't reach any odd number of swaps because you can never add even numbers to produce an odd number. Now for a three by three, again, there's only one type of turn you can do and that's an outer turn. So a three by three also has four corners. So just like a two by two, when you do an outer turn, you are doing three swaps of corners. So if it's just like a two by two, why is it impossible to just swap two pieces? The truth is it's possible to just swap two corners without taking the cube apart, just like I did on a two by two. The difference is you end up with two edges swapped as well. So let's look more carefully at one turn on a three by three. Obviously it doesn't just move the corners. There are four edges that all just moved over by one. So just like with the corners, there are three swaps happening. So you can swap the corners an odd number of times, which means you can swap the corners any number of times, including one. But anytime you do a turn and it adds three corner swaps, it also adds three edge swaps which means that you can also swap the edges any number of times, but you have to swap the corners and edges both in even number of times or both in odd number of times. You can't have those be different. So in my impossible situation where I swap two corners and no edges, then this is one swap of corners and zero swaps of edges. That's odd and even happening at the same time, but we know that turning one side makes the corners and edges both be odd or both be even number of swaps. So three by three is where parity matters. And in this case, it's not where the number of swaps has to be odd or even. It can be either one, but the edges and corners parity have to match. So let's turn our attention to the void cube. Why is it that when you remove the centerpieces, it behaves differently than a regular three by three? Clearly when you turn one side, it does the same thing. Four corners, four edges, they're each doing three swaps. But on a void cube, you have one more type of turn you can do. And that type of turn is a slice turn. So let's think about what a slice turn does. There are four edges along here, and if you do a slice turn, you cycle those four edges the same way you would if you just did an outer turn. Therefore, this is also just doing three swaps of edges. But notice that when we did this, we didn't swap any corners, which means that now we're moving the edges independently of the corners, and that allows the edges to keep switching between odd and even while the corners stay the same. This means edge parity and corner parity do not have to be the same on a void cube. So if they don't have to be the same, that means one of them can be one and one of them can be zero. And that means just one swap of corners or just one swap of edges is possible on a void cube. Now you might be wondering why can't I just do the same thing on a three by three? I can definitely do a slice move, right? This does also move four edges and it does also change the parity, but now your centers are in the wrong place. So how I'll solve this is by undoing the slice move or by rotating the whole cube. And rotating the whole cube again moves the centers, which means I'm just undoing the slice move I did earlier. Another way you can think about it is if I don't allow cube rotations and just do a slice move, then what that means is yes, I added three swaps of edges, but since four centers moved, I also added three swaps of centers. 
All right, you ready? One slice move, solve the rest. And I've swapped two edges. Now on a four x four, there are two types of parodies. One looks like a three x three flipped edge, but this is not actually a flipped edge. If it's not a center edge piece right in the middle, which a four x four doesn't have, then these are called wings. So you might be wondering why don't I just call it two edges instead of wings? I often do, but this is literally a different piece type. Here, let me show you. If you take a wing out and you try and flip it and put it back in its spot, it's literally impossible. So when you see this flipped edge, you're actually seeing this wing should belong here. See, now the colors are correct. So this isn't a flip, this is one swap of wings. And we've been talking about one swaps, so we can apply the same logic here. So you can figure out what the outer turns do if you'd like, but I'm gonna focus on a slice turn, which again moves four wings, just like a slice moves four edges on a three by three. And when you move four of them in a circle, that's three swaps. That means parity for wings can be odd or even, just depending on how many slice moves I decide to do. So in this case, it's odd since I have one swap. But if I add a slice move just by doing this, then now parity is solved as long as I keep doing only an even number of more slice moves. So this is actually the intuitive way to solve 4x4 OLL parity. And here, let me show you the completion. So I'm just gonna solve the rest of the centers without doing another odd number of slice moves. So I'm gonna move this one into here, doing one, two slice moves, and do the same thing for the rest of the centers. So move white here and move blue here. And then I'll have two edges I still need to fix. So I can get them like this, slice, flip, slice. And now parity will be solved if I keep going to the end. So I'll just, I'll just get there. And there you go. I have an even number of edges flipped. So that means I can solve the rest. Oh no, I've ran into another type of parity. Or is it? You may have heard this before, but PLL parity is not really parity. It looks like parity on a 3x3 because I have one swap of edges. But if you consider them to be wings, you actually have this one needs to go here and this one needs to go here, and these two also need to swap. So that's two swaps of wings, which is an even parity. That's why people don't call this a real parity, because parity usually refers to odd parity. The problem is if you just do outer turns, you can't separate these wings. So if you do inner turns, there actually is no problem. There's no odd number of slice turns you have to fix. You can do this with an even number of slice turns. You just have to know how to do commutators to move individual wings around. I won't explain that here, but I'll just show you how that could be done. So I'm gonna move this one up here, flip this edge, move it back down, undo that flip. And now I've solved this one and I have three left to go. So here I can flip this one, probably could have canceled moves, slice this undo the flip, and undo the slice. Now let's quickly talk about flipped pieces because that's slightly similar to parity. So why is this impossible? Why can't I just have one corner twisted? Also, why is this impossible? Two corners twisted, this is unsolvable because I can just reduce it back down to a one corner state. But this one is solvable. So to explain why, we just need a good definition of corner twist. So right now, all the whites are facing up and all the yellows are facing down. So the definition I'll have is any corner with white on it must have white facing up or facing down. Same for the corners with yellow, they need yellow facing up or down. If they're not, I'll define the corner twist as how many times I need to turn it clockwise to solve it. So example one, right now everything is not twisted. Example two, I'm gonna do one turn and see what happened. This one needs one turn to solve to get white on top. This one needs two turns because I'm going to do everything clockwise. One, two, and now white is on the bottom. Now this one needs two, and this one needs one. So when I do one turn, it twisted my corners six times. And you can test any possible turn you can do. It always twists the corners by either six or zero times. This means that no matter what state the cube is in, it should have a corner twist count that is a multiple of six. So for this one, obviously it's not a multiple of six. One. Two. So obviously that was not solvable because by doing turns, I can only reach states that have a corner twist multiple of six. And again, this one was impossible because one, two. Well, what about this one? Well, this is one, two, three. That's not a multiple of six, but it is solvable. That's because I'm not done counting. Four, five, six. So just like with a two by two example, you have to get a little clever with your definition because there are times when what you're counting can cancel with itself. So in this case, I can keep twisting any corner three more times and that is fine, which means that my multiple of six definition is technically right, but it's better to say that it has to be a multiple of three because if I have any multiple of six and I can change it by three if I'd like to, then what I'm producing is just multiples of three. 
Now for why you can't flip a single edge, the definition for edge flips is a little more complicated, or maybe there's a simpler one I just don't know, but I have a ZZ method tutorial that actually counts how many edges are flipped, and they're always an even number. The reason is because if you do any turn that isn't a front or back turn, then you end up flipping zero edges. And if you do a front or back turn, you end up flipping four edges. So the parity of that is always even, and you can never reach an odd number of flipped edges like this one. Now before we end this video, I have a challenge for you guys. This is a Mega Minx, and the question is, can you do just two edges swapped on a Mega Minx? As in, obviously not taking pieces apart, just doing outer turns, and every other edge needs to be solved. The corners, I don't care where they are, just two edges have to be in each other's locations. Is that possible on a Mega Minx, and if it is or if it isn't, can you explain why? So leave a comment if you know the answer, obviously explain why because I know a lot of you guys know how to solve Mega Minx so you know what the answer is. So I know I normally talk about speed cubing and this is not really speed cubing, just cube theory, but I had a lot of fun making this so let me know if you guys have any more questions about cubes that you just want to be answered and it doesn't have to do with speed cubing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.